the next few minutes, you'll be learning about a practical breakthrough in the development of an exciting new liquid fuel. It's a new source of green power energy. And during the process, you'll be gaining an insight into one of the most important themes unfolding in the story of 21st century energy. You'll also never be able to think of sugarcane but gas, nor look at a pile of sawdust like this in the same way ever again. Nobody has the right to destroy our atmosphere. In this 21st century, we must somehow come to grips with the fact that our appetite for energy is insatiable. Global demand for non-renewable fossil fuels is increasing exponentially. And with it comes a rolling wave of escalating energy crises and ominous environmental threats. Fossil fuels have been driving the economy and energy for the last 150 years. But one of the consequences of the use of fossil fuels has been environmental impact, global warming. And we've realized that we have to find other types of sources of energy which could be as flexible as hydrocarbons are to reduce the impact in the environment. Now, if we can find a source of energy which is greenhouse gas neutral, which is abundant, which can be created from a sustainable resource, and which can be handled in the same way as hydrocarbons are because of their characteristics, then we have a significant competitive advantage. There is one promising alternative source of renewable energy which can deliver that competitive advantage, biomass. The waste left over by the forest industry and by agricultural activities such as the refining of sugar from cane. The volume of biomass wastes produced worldwide each year is absolutely staggering. 500 million metric tons of sugarcane bagasse, over 100 million tons of forest wastes, and hundreds of millions of tons of other agricultural wastes. Now it's true some of this material is recycled into value-added products, but still a significant portion remains unused. The problem of waste disposal be landfilled or incinerated away. That is until March of 2001, when Dynamotive, with the opening of its 10-ton per day bio-oil pilot plant, began demonstrating that the production of a green fuel alternative from biomass waste is clearly a commercially viable reality. This is bio-oil. What makes it so amazing is that when it's burned as a substitute for fossil fuels, it produces no sulfur dioxide much lower levels of nitrogen oxide than diesel or oil. And because it's derived from biomass, bio-oil is considered to be CO2 or greenhouse gas neutral. This is Dynamotive's patented fast pyrolysis reactor. It's at the heart of the production process. Prepared feedstock, whether it's chips, bark, or gas is injected into this high temperature chamber which contains a fluidized bubbling bed of sand in an inert atmosphere. The feedstock flashes and vaporizes like throwing droplets of water into a hot frying pan. The resulting gases pass into a cyclone where solid particles or char are separated out while the gases enter a quenching tower. They're cooled quickly using bio oil that was previously made in the process. The bio-oil condenses and falls into the product storage tank, while non-condensable gases are returned to the reactor to fire the process continuously. The entire reaction from injection to quenching takes only two seconds. 100% of the feedstock is utilized in the process to produce first bio-oil and second char, which can be used to make briquettes and other valuable products. Even the non-condensable gases are used as energy to run the process. So nothing is wasted, and no waste is produced. It's a closed loop. There's a lot of fuel down there. How much? Well, we've constructed to a commercial scale a single bio-oil plant processing about 400 tons per day of biomass waste would be capable of replacing the natural gas which is required to heat four sawmills like this one. Or it can heat 14,000 homes or provide the electricity for more than 7,000 households year in and year out. So now you can see why so many people are excited about the potential of this revolutionary green power technology.
in the forest industry, I think this is a very important uh, event and an important technology because in our industry, uh, for many, many years, we've been burning wood waste and putting ash and uh, emissions into the atmosphere and, uh, and wasting energy, frankly. And so this is really a watershed uh, uh, technology that will enable uh, CAMFOR, uh, Canada's largest lumber producer, and I assume my competitors in the industry will soon be looking at this as well as a way of, of uh, making use of their wood waste and actually turning an expense into a revenue item and earning greenhouse credits at the same time because this is a, a very environmentally friendly uh, use of wood waste. In the side of the world where I come from, uh, I see that there is a big potential because we have a, a lot of waste coming from forestry and agricultural uh, activities and all this waste can be converted into a renewable fuel like uh, this plant produces. As a new fuel commodity, the initial challenge faced by bio oil will be how best to develop its commercial potential. So Dynamotive is following the development path blazed by the petroleum industry when it originally brought hydrocarbon fuels to the market. The first huge markets for bio-oil as a new commodity naturally will be close to the sources of biomass feedstock, where bio-oil produced can be used immediately in stationary boilers to provide industrial heating for lumber kilns, pulp mills, in greenhouse operations, and in district heating systems. In Europe, agreements have been signed and excitement is building for using bio-oil in diesel and gas turbines as the base fuel for electrical power generation. In the United States, the potential for both heating and power generation is enormous. Island economies and developing countries with substantial biomass wastes also present tremendous opportunities. This is a, an environmentally friendly fuel. Uh, I think the potential is almost infinite. It could be the next oil, but it will definitely be a power generation source. In England, for instance, they've got the National Fossil Fuel Objective that says 10% of their national energy will be produced from renewable energy in the next 10 years. 10% uh, of that is, is more units than we could possibly build in the next 10 years. That's just England. So it, it, it's a huge potential, and, and the whole world is going green. Uh, this, this is the first liquid green fuel uh, available. Looking beyond stationary boilers and gas turbines, there is of course the potential of blending bio-oil with fuels like methanol and ethanol. But biomass feedstocks required for sustainable bio-oil production are huge, totally renewable and readily available above ground today. The piles of wood waste growing larger around sawmills and the agricultural residues accumulating every day around sugar refineries can now be seen not as waste disposal problems, but as renewable above-ground energy reserves. Indeed, when we plot these sustainable above-ground bio-oil reserves the way we do underground petroleum, the map of the world's energy future starts to look dramatically different. We have the technology, we can replicate the technology, and now we're in a position to move forward and produce this fuel in the quantities that is going to make a difference. We're going to be providing the world the technology to produce a fuel that will play an important role in the energy mix and that will help us fuel our sustainable future. Well, I told you you'd never look at piles of sawdust and wood waste the same way ever again, much less the other sources of biomass feedstock which can produce bio-oil. Above-ground oil reserves. Now there's a 21st century concept for you. Well, I'm not sure how over the next 20 years we're going to replace the fossil fuels that power our world today. I only know that solving that problem will become even more critical as the century unfolds. And I suppose, call it a hunch if you will, that bio-oil is going to figure prominently in how we shape and fuel that future.